I'll just park right here. The most patient man in the world drives a beef jerky Volkswagen Beetle. This is the card, this is the track, and this is what I want to do to the crickets that won't stop chirping inside of the garage that I'm recording in. Get them. I'm John Wick, by the way, just to clarify things. One cricket in particular, this one right here. So hopping into qualifying, and this is for Spa, by the way, we have 10 laps of Spa. Also, they just updated this track, so my FPS is struggling a bit. My 1080 is just about on its final leg right now. 20.6 for our first qualifying lap as we cross the line. Not a bad time, but we really need to be in the low 20s. Preferably high 19s, that's like some alien pace just about, or I mean 18s is alien pace, but 19 seems like an alien pace to me. Through Eau and Radion with this spa update, it is easily flat out, however, I'm going to take too much of that first curb, so it shoots me out to the left, I have to lift, but not majorly, doesn't hurt me too much, breaking before this curb on the left side, down to third gear, trailing in over this curb, hook your tire on that right side, then on the left side, keep the other tire on the tarmac, opening this one up and trying to lift as little as possible back onto the throttle, avoiding the gravel and braking just before this curb once again, down to second gear, extremely light trail braking until you meet that second apex, or at least you see the rotation that your car will meet that second apex. Little bit of braking here, swing the car around, do not get up on that red sausage, just ride the red and yellow curbing there on the left side and on the right side. Coming towards Puan, I'd brake just a few, probably like 20 meters, 10 meters after the beginning of that curb, trailing through fourth gear until you meet the apex slowly build throttle let the car kind of naturally open up you don't have to slam onto the throttle just be uh try and try and work with the car there same thing through this sector into third gear and you want to hook that right tire just barely onto that curb you kind of want to avoid this curb on the left side you definitely can take it but every once in a while it will throw you around braking before the curbing on the left side trying to get a late apex here so that we can avoid the dirt as much as we can it's okay to get a little bit into the dirt but you don't want to be a full tire into the dirt for the full duration of that curb i don't think through a blanchiment i do a little bit of lifting here you don't have to but i just really really wanted to set this time i was already i think i was like a tenth or so up on my previous time so any improvement is an improvement and coming through the final chicane powering out in second gear i try to avoid first there but you can go to first i think it may be a little bit of personal preference and we're going to set a 220.47 so that was actually good enough for p2 on the grid really happy with that as car number seven starting on p2 the car ahead honestly not that much faster of a qualifying time joey is in this race he did not qualify he got two off track so he's starting p21 and my clutch just completely releases i think it unbinded uh it the, the telemetry doesn't show it here but my clutch literally dropped so i jumped the start that P2 has gone to waste. I'm just letting people through who want to go through. I know that I'm going to have to pull my car in at the end of this lap and serve a drive through penalty. So that qualifying really did not matter or make a difference whatsoever. Maybe it saved us like 10 or 15 seconds. Or it's, actually, it might have saved our life because you may notice Joey is only like eight cars behind us. We're going to skip back to the beginning of this race to see how he climbed that many positions that fast. And honestly, um, it's all thanks to car number 20, who's a couple of cars ahead of Joey. We'll show his POV in just a second. Heading towards turn number one, and look at this. I mean, they're 18 wide, and this guy has created a roadblock, and Joey just happens to be one of the cars that gets through there basically unscathed. He, has, he does make contact there, but it's nothing major. Here is car number 20's view as he just breaks way too late. He's... Tr uh, really aggressive on the inside there. I think it's better just to survive through the source. You can make up positions later in the race. This is just ridiculous though. I'm not even going to, I, I don't have the vocabulary to explain what just happened there. Here's Joey's perspective as he gains, I think eight positions on that one corner minus the two that he gained on launch. So I think he's up like 10 positions right now. I think he's into P11 somewhere around there. 
absurd start, a legendary start for Joey, making up a ton of time already. And then he cuts Radion immediately after. So he's going to have to serve, uh, I think it's like a one and a half second slowdown. He loses five or so posi positions there. And needless to say, that was, that was a suboptimal start for both of the PSR cars on the grid, not doing the peanut butter and jelly livery proud right now. Uh, Joey is going to try and make up for that corner cutting as heading into Ravage. Does he look up the inside here? He's pretty far back. I, okay, never mind. He looks up the inside of car number 15 from way downtown, 15 allowing space, and Joey is through there. So quickly gonna make up some positions or at least a position. Skipping ahead to T, I think this is 14 and then 15. He is right on the tail of Diego Krug. That's car number eight ahead of him who also failed to qualify. So these guys are probably going to be fighting through the grid together, I assume. Or uh, it looks like Joey is going to lead the fight through the grid because he is hauling ass up the inside uh, towards Blanchemont. And they're going to go too wide through Blanchemont. Somebody should back out here. It's going to be Diego on the outside settling behind Joey. So Joey pulls through. Car ahead may have just I don't think that was a slowdown it had to have been close though and as Joey makes his way around I am heading into the pits to serve my slowdown or my drive through and I am going to plummet down the standings of course this had to happen just after I learned to launch my car I swear there was a mechanical issue it was not me if there's any teams looking uh, to give me an IRL seat it was a mechanical issue so just putting that disclaimer out there exiting the pit lane in P20, however, uh, that car who caused that massive pile up on turn one is also going to go through. So we're actually going to be demoted into P21 as we head through Eau Rouge Radion for the second time. I am not very eager immediately to get any of these positions back. I figured I would give it like a lap or so just to kind of settle into the track and um, cool my nerves a little bit because I was a bit frustrated with myself absolutely after jumping the start like that. Into Ravage, this is where I realize that it is definitely going to be better that we get past these guys sooner uh, rather than later. Uh, as we get slowed down, probably losing a full second through Ravage behind these two guys. Thankfully, P20 is going to be gifted to us by Diego Krug, who is right behind Joey at this point, and he's going to slide out through no name. Perfect timing. We are, I think, the last car to get past him, which was great. So up into P20, maybe top 20 position still losing 85 eye rating right now but we have a lot of time to try and minimize that hopefully go positive but my expectations were realistic at this point we're in p20 there's eight laps left to go i would need to be averaging like two positions a lap to be in the top five so that was like definitely out of the uh the air for me baiting a move to the inside of the chicane car two cars ahead bites i think and locks up his tires going through there so we move up into p19 as we cross onto lap number three less than a second to aiden ahead and less than a second to Diego behind, which is fine. As long as there's somebody ahead of you, you should be able to stay away from the person behind through the, all the way down the Kimmel, as long as you have a good run through the, uh, through Eau Rouge and Radion here, which we are slightly lifting for and might've been the right move because up ahead of us, Aiden completely cuts the, uh, the top of Radion. And perhaps I should have moved over earlier, but I wanted to use all the slipstream. I could almost end up paying the ultimate price for that as he gets on the brakes down the Kimmel straight, as opposed to just lifting and serving that slowdown. We do survive, gain a position from the guy ahead of him and Diego gets a slowdown behind us. So we lose pressure behind us, uh, gain two positions up into P17. And we have three seconds now to P16, uh, more actually, it looks like it's closer to around four. I don't know what the relative is doing. It's dancing all up and down. It wouldn't be until lap number five that we caught up to P16. So it took us uh, a while. It took us about, what, three laps, two laps to gain, close those four seconds. And once we got into slipstream range, the gap started to close a lot faster. So we're right up behind him, three tenths behind him. Our last lap was over a second faster. We should be able to get this position. I hope that we can. Don't want to make the move yet. Want to wait till after Blanchemont. Too wide through there is going to kill our run. And he moves over to the outside towards the chicane. So we take the inside, secure that position. I don't think he's outbreaking us and going around the outside there. Felt pretty confident in that one. As we cross on to lap number six, now up into P16. Uh, once again, a few seconds till the cars ahead, uh, mostly because of that accident on T1 that Joey was involved in. It totally split up the grid to like on lap two, I think from P1 to the final car was like 45, 50 seconds. Like the, the grid got super spread out. 
by the end of lap number six we are going to close up that gap to p15 just about getting on the bumper of the sky as we go through the final corner and heading towards lap number seven Things are starting to look a little bit more optimistic. We have four laps left, including this one. We're in P16 at the moment, only losing 52 I rating. And there is a decently sized group. It looks like just a few seconds ahead of us, like five or six seconds ahead of us. There's around four or five cars. So opportunity to gain a lot of positions. When I'm in the slipstream like this, I don't take a Rouge and Radion flat out. You can cut it super easily. So I do a small lift when I'm in slipstream, especially slipstream like that it was very strong and uh, 24 a bit more of a lift from him as he loses a ton of speed moves over to the outside of the Kimmel and we move up the inside I was a bit precautious here I've been killed many times by somebody who I thought was kind of giving up the position so I stay in the middle of the track trying to avoid any rear possible rear ending and we gain that position up ahead car number 19 is in a three-way battle with these two guys makes contact as they head towards Ravage actually ends up losing a position to car number 12 I think that is taking the inside he's got to hold it tight here ends up drifting pretty far gonna make contact 19 almost losing it makes slight contact with the rear end of 12 and it actually saves his life all of that fighting brings these guys significantly back to me i'm just about a second or just over a second off of franz who is p14 and we just need to put in a solid lap if we can get into slipstream by the time blanchemont slash the chicane comes around that's fantastic if not then we aim to get into the slipstream by uh by the next run down the kimmel straight and that should just about put us on the tail of these guys so i'm not in a major rush we still have three laps left after this one and right now kind of gauging the situation i'm in p15 i can see four cars ahead of me so that would put me into p4 p11 five minus four is 11 so that would put me into p11 which would not be a bad result for us maybe positive way up ahead of us car number 10 is going to just completely lock up his tires on the inside of the chicane and by the time he is rejoining joey who has been fighting for his life will cover the rest of joey's race a little bit later but he's going to pick up that position for free so he is still moving up the order right now and as we come towards that chicane not all that long after franz up ahead of us it's carrying in way too much speed not quite meeting the camber and sliding out through that chicane super easy to do if you don't recognize early on that you were not going to make that corner uh the best thing to do is what that car did earlier which is kind of just go straight on through that chicane if you're not going to make it in service slowdown yellow guy up ahead can't explain it must have had too many incident points or i don't know the baby was crying he just completely leaves the race so we are up into p13 two positions away from p11 which is kind of the goal i set for myself and before we get into the final couple of laps of my race we're going to go ahead and check on kind of the duration of joey's race skipping all of the way back to lap number two where he picked up this free position uh from car number 12 who we actually end up getting involved with later so you can tell that that guy's going to fall down the order just a few corners later going through Puan and he is involved with this massive group up ahead of him. I think this is five cars all within about a second and a half of each other and he is going to look to make it a two by two situation. He's on the outside of the uh, back half of the, that two by two. Car number 17 not able to continue the march. He falls out wide, gives Joey the entire track to himself. Franz then pulls in front of Josh who's that black and white car, slows him down. Joey is kind of forced to go up the inside through corner 14 and heading into corner 15. Joey has track position. Josh does have a, I mean, he should have a really good run here he was able to open up that corner a lot more but joey stays in front of him and kind of kills his run there josh is probably optimally looking for a move into the chicane however joey gets a good run through blanchemont actually an advantageous off track there to him somebody ban him and by the time lap number three comes around a truly unfortunate moment for joey as car number 19 goes really deep here which kind of forces joey to take the inside and uh, puts him at the front of this pack. Joey doesn't really have the slipstream from ahead. He's got four cars directly behind him. They're basically all towing each other. So it's a really difficult situation to be in. Optimally, Joey would have actually stayed behind car number 19, that orange car behind, until they got onto the Kimmel, and then he probably would have passed him with slipstream, but that is not to be the case. So Joey is kind of a sitting duck here. He moves to the outside, back to the inside, taking a slightly semi-defensive line before just completely opening up the track. And it looks like any defense that is gonna come from Joey is gonna be through the comb. He has the outside and you can make it work on either side but he's gonna err on the side of caution here actually and let car number 19 through settling back into this group here and actually falling under the pressure of Joshua once again as Joshua is right on his tail a lot closer to Joey than Joey is to Franz and Joey is going to pull on take a line that kind of aims towards the apex there for a double apex through Ravage and keep that position Skipping ahead to lap number four, still following Joey here, and jo car number 19 ahead of Joey. This is kind of how he finds himself in our grasps as he completely cuts Radion. 
Joey realizes that. He's soaking up the slipstream for as long as he can. Car number 19 lifting to serve that penalty. Joey going around the outside and kind of breaking free from all of the cars behind him, putting about around, I don't know, seven tenths between himself and Josh. And he pretty soon finds himself on the tail of car number 11 as they cross onto the very next lap. So this is lap number five. And Joey is hot on the tail of this guy. This is the optimal time to make a move into the source. Uh, hopefully car 11 will push him down the straight. But it's not going to get that far because Joey way under breaks that. He's going to go flying off of the track into the dirt. Actually end up losing a position to Josh. So he'll rejoin not as in bad of a situation as it could have been, honestly. That could have been a lot worse for him. He would end up catching up to Josh later that lap, so this is the end of lap number six, heading towards lap number seven. And as we approach the chicane, Joshua up ahead, getting a little bit of a shimmy there, some, something happening with his car, probably just on the edge of locking up, and Joey goes through, so back to where he was at the start of that lap, chasing down car number 11. Now, back into our race. We are still chasing down these two guys ahead of us. P11 is the car, that white car ahead of this red car and I'm right on the tail of them. I know that it's possible. We have two laps left to go. I just have to be smart about how and where I make these moves. And at this point, my most optimal place to pass would be on the Kimmel this lap. If I could get a good run on the Kimmel this lap, hopefully get past both of them. I mean, that is optimal. If I only get past one of them, also fine. Uh, hopefully I could break away or make a pass on the second half of the lap past the other one, get to P11, and still have a few corners. All I would really need I think is corners 14 all the way up until the chicane and I should be able to pull enough of a gap however that plan goes to shit as I have to lift going through Eau Rouge and Radion so scratch everything I just said Let's check back in with Joey, who is fighting for P7 with this guy ahead. This is just a few moments earlier to what you just saw uh, on board with me. And he gets a really good run down the straight. He's going to move around the outside. And right as that guy starts to move over to take a semi-defensive line, Joey slots to the inside and claims the inside towards Lacombe. Makes a little bit of contact as Levin is trying to hold him tight. And I think Joey just doesn't quite see him there. Rubbin is racing and nobody died. A few seconds later, I will come flying through the comb, still behind these two guys. And at this point, a bit of an aggressive move is in my head. Literally right now, as we head towards Ravage, I'm thinking, okay, corner number 14, he's gonna move to open it up because you really need to open up that corner to get the best run. And I'm just going to stay on the inside and dive him. And you'll see when we get there, just how much I force that move, I promise. I was thinking about it as we went through Ravage. I already had it in my head. And I'll show you, you'll, you'll actually see me set the move up and I'll kind of walk you through it. So we're going through Puan and corner 14, that line depends on you getting a good run into this next corner. So to throw him offline, I peep to the inside. However, I actually break slightly early to make sure that I get a good exit, not only here, but also this next corner, which is what's really important because as we approach corner number 14, I now have the speed on him. I have a speed difference up the inside. I said I was doing it and I'm fucking... <laughs> yeah, I forced the hell out of that one. But I got it stopped. Somehow I got it stopped. Look at this. Oh shit. That was not the that that is not the best way to make that overtake. But in the end, it was still clean. Uh, no contact with anybody. Somehow managed to keep the car on track. Slotted in just ahead of him, and he kind of looks to the inside there, uh, which actually messes up his run through corner 15 so it keeps me safe all of the way through Blanchemont and towards the chicane a lot of time now between us and car number 11 about a second and a half to make up and we only have one lap left so we're heading towards the final lap didn't know if this was going to be close at this point I was thinking okay I might have to do what I just did to that guy to this guy because I didn't think I was going to catch him until that point of the next lap but coming through the chicane we closed the gap up from one and a half seconds to under half of a second so gaining a ton of time on him there and now we should have the slipstream heading down the Kimmel in order to put this guy under pressure a lot sooner than I thought possibly a move at the end of the Kimmel into Lacombe and that whole little S's section. He locks up his tires going through the source. I do not want that position yet. I stay behind him, kind of ease onto the throttle. We have a bit of time behind us, so we're not under any immediate pressure. Three tenths behind him. It does not get any more perfect than this. There is nothing he can do here unless he did something completely erratic and just about full throttle through there. Small lift. He's going to end up cutting uh, Radion. So another position from somebody cutting Radion, which seems to be how you gain like most of the positions on this track around the outside. He's going to have to serve that at some point. He's not serving it yet. And for a second, I thought he didn't have a uh, slowdown, but he does. Eventually he serves it. And honestly, he served it really well. He does 
put himself into a fight with P6 with car number 16, but it's better than losing the position yet. He still has the opportunity to fight for it. And on exit, I don't know if you guys heard that, but car number 16 absolutely was riding the hell out of his red line. So he loses momentum and uh, Bob Bryant, who's in P12 at the moment, maintains his position. One and a half seconds behind us, two seconds ahead. I don't think we're catching Josh uh, by two seconds on the last lap. So coming around the chicane for the final time and that would be our finishing position. P11, it looks like we're only gonna lose 11 I rating. Could have gone way worse. Um, obviously I could have like totally lost my mental when I got that drive through, but we stuck with it, did what we could, drove clean and came across for two incident points, P11. Let's fucking go. I'm happy with that. Joey also had a fantastic recovery race, finishing P7. Here are the results. As we mentioned, P11 actually only lost 10 I rating it looks like. And uh, Joey finishing P7. Gaining some I rating actually, so really, really good recovery race. Uh, starting P21, by the way, Joey did. We gained safety rating there. Ignore the I rating, we gained safety rating. Fighting through 12 people or something like that at Spa with a decent lap actually, only less than a 10th off of the fastest lap. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video and wanna support me, please check out the channel and some of my other videos and I'm willing to bet you'll enjoy those as well.